Corey, your piece is titled Biden is more fearful than the Ukrainians are. And you get at this <laughs> idea of the Biden administration and the president himself not wanting to escalate this war. Obviously supportive of Ukraine from the very beginning. Ukrainians acknowledge they might have already lost this war, if not for the support of the United States. But they also say because President Biden has not wanted to escalate this in some way and make it a wider war, that it has perhaps slowed their progress a bit. Absolutely. As Jim Stavridis just said, you know, that we have hesitated to provide or permit allies to provide Ukraine with the fighter aircraft that would permit them to have dominance over their own airspace. We are also denying them the ability to retaliate against the strikes that Russia is posing, uh, imposing on Ukrainian cities. We're not letting them strike back at the Russian and locations from which those are launched. So those are two really important restrictions we're putting on the Ukrainian war effort. And I think the reason is that the Biden administration, they are justified in being concerned about escalation, but the policy choices they're making, which is let's not uh, cross any perceived Russian red lines, that encourages Russia to threaten us with escalation. A better response would be to reinforce deterrence by arguing that if we see the Russians moving to escalate, we will increase the support we are giving to Ukraine. We will provide them the intelligence and the weapons to preempt any Russian escalation. And that we will, uh, NATO will reinforce Ukraine further and any Russians responsible for escalatory moves will see them either hunted down and taken to The Hague or hunted down and killed. I think that's the way to prevent escalation. Admiral, we saw a clip uh, coming into this segment uh, from Secretary Blinken speaking in Helsinki uh, before NATO. There's another NATO gathering in Oslo early next week. Yep. Uh, my question to you is, given your familiarity with all of the players within NATO, what's the level of insecurity within NATO membership about the political situation in the United States of America going forward. Yeah, it's significant. Let's be honest. Um, our allies, partners, and friends, not just in NATO, look at our divisions here and feel that is our Achilles heel. And I think they're correct. In my view, there is no security problem the United States cannot overcome if we can come together to address it. And so a bit of good news on this morning, I think, was the debt deal. The show's been talking about the mm -hmm. center holding. On China, stepping up and facing China, the center is holding. There's a bipartisan committee that's looking into our strategy for China. And on Ukraine, the center is holding. Pop quiz, what's the only capital city that Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi have both visited. That would be Kyiv, Ukraine. I think the center will hold. If it does, we will be able to surmount these challenges. If it does not, the world will be far weaker and far more distorted. So, um, Corey, let me let me ask you a um, just a, a, a historical question. Let's let's step back a bit, and I'd love to hear the admiral's response as well. Uh, uh, Anthony Blinken talking this morning about the 100,000 casualties the Russians have already absorbed. They've, they've underperformed in a way that few, uh, I'd say uh, nobody could have predicted. And so this is, this is sort of, this is the 30,000 foot question, uh, sort of a historical question. Uh, so Admiral talked about uh, Russia underperforming horribly uh, in the Winter War. Uh, in, in starting in 1939, we had, of course, the German invasion of, of June of 41. And yes, uh, uh, ultimately they were repelled, but they were repelled more uh, because of the size of the landmass and, and just because the Russians were willing to absorb tens of millions of deaths of, of their own people. You look at 1989, just the sudden collapse of the Warsaw Pact, the wall coming down, the collapse in 1991. You look at, again, again, all these examples of overestimations of Russian might. And here we are, 2023, once again, staring at uh, the great bear uh, that, that once again radically underperforms and ends up being far weaker. What is it? 
what, what is it militarily? What is it culturally? What is it politically that always makes the Russian military far weaker than our intel analysts in the world suspect they are? Well, I think militaries are only as strong as the social compact and the political um, cohesion of the country that they represent. And I agree with your underlying argument that, first of all, it's very difficult to tell how good an army is until you fight it. But second of all, the Russian military may be much more brittle than we are um, assessing them to be. And it could be that uh, you know, I, I disagree with Jim a little bit. I think the best case isn't both sides bleeding out to a stalemate. I think the, it, it's a reasonable, optimistic outcome that the Russians, when confronted with a Ukrainian offensive, that the brittleness of the Russian military shows and they prove incapable of even defending the existing positions.